So if you've never heard of Polebridge, Montana, in today's video we're going to take you up the North Fork Road and show you the little town of Polebridge and you got to see it. It's one of the coolest towns in Montana. Here we go. So we're going to start our trip right here in downtown Columbia Falls. The road, the North Fork Road from Columbia Falls up to Polebridge is 35 miles. And you can actually continue past Polebridge and go, go all the way up to Canada, which I did do a video on that last year if you want to check it out. And I can put it in the links here. So once you get out of town and you head over the train tracks, uh, you start heading north up. This is now the North Fork Road. And it is paved for about 12 miles and it's just a beautiful drive. There's, you know, woods all around you and the North Fork of the Flathead River is off to the right, which you'll see here in a moment. And you follow that basically all the way up to Polebridge. And the North Fork is a great river for rafting and fishing and people use it all the time. Uh, like I said, this road is 12 miles of pavement, pavement once you get north of Columbia Falls. And then it turns to gravel and it goes gravel for probably about eight miles until you get to the Camas Road. But this day that we went up to Polebridge, we, you always run into wildlife. Today, we ran into four baby bighorn sheep, which was kind of cool to see. And uh, I'll show you a little later. I've seen grizzly bear on this road. I've seen obviously many deer, elk. Uh, you see pretty much everything on this road, even though it's getting kind of busy now with all the new tourism here in Montana. It's just a great road to drive if you just want to see the sights and more than likely see some animals on the way as well. But as we continue on, you'll see in front of us here, those mountains, that's looking into Glacier Park. Once you get here at the corner of Camas Road and where the bridge goes over the, flat, the North Fork River, uh, everything on the other side of that is Glacier Park. So those mountains out there are in Glacier. This is further down the road where, you know, you'll find all kinds of creeks on the way. And again, wilderness. There's areas where it kind of opens up here, big ranches before you get up to Pole Bridge. And it's just a great drive all the way, all the way up to Pole Bridge. It's one of those, one of those areas in Montana that I love to go to and uh, it's just beautiful. There's really nothing bad to say about this area. And then as you see, the road turned back to pavement and it turns pavement for about seven miles again until about a mile out of Pole Bridge. One of the little businesses you'll see along the way, this is called Home Bottoms Ranch. It's got a little bar and restaurant there and I believe they have camping there. I've been there one time. But here's the grizzly I saw between that home bottoms and pole bridge the one year it was right on the side of the road and uh for me that's the best way to see a grizzly bear is when you're in your car and you can get away <laughs> and you don't have to worry about it chasing you so here we are turning off the north fork road into the the main entrance to pole bridge if you want to call it that and there's about a quarter mile where you come down the road and right at the end of the road right in your face this is the pole bridge mercantile that we will go into in a moment, but this was built in 1914. And then on the left side of it is the Northern Lights Saloon, which was originally the house for the people that ran the mercantile in 1914. It was built four years after Glacier became a park and there was a actual pole bridge down the road that they named this town after. And again, I put town in quotes, but as you turn right, uh, at the mercantile here, we'll go down into the so-called residential area. Right here is still some cabins and some areas they rent out that's tied into the saloon or into the mercantile. But then as you go further down, you get into people that have cabins up here. You'll also see a bunch of people that have yurts, and that's kind of interesting. You don't see a lot of yurts around, but here in Pole Bridge, they're kind of all over the place. And one of the things I didn't tell you is once you get 12 miles north of Columbia Falls, when the pavement ends there uh, earlier in the video, that is the end of the grid, as they call it. So everything up here, every one of these houses, every one of the yurts 
everything you see is off grid. So the entire town is off grid. So you see a lot of solar panels. The mercantile is run off of solar power and propane. And most of these homes will heat their homes with wood. So there's everybody has wood burning stoves. Obviously, there's plenty of wood up in this area to use for fuel. So uh, because they're off grid, that's what people use. So now we're back into the town. Here's the Northern Lights Saloon. And like I said, that was the original house back in 1914 for the people that started the mercantile. And they lived in this log cabin and then they ran the store that's right next door, right, that's right there, that's next door. And the mercantile is just a really cool place. And if you're ever in this area, you definitely need to go. Um, they have a bakery in there that's incredible. And they make, uh, they're called Huckleberry Bear Claws. And they also make these little pocket sandwiches that are really good. But they sell hats and t-shirts. And also because this is the only store, you know, in this whole area from 40 miles away from Columbia Falls, basically, uh, it is an actual grocery store. So you can get, you know, your basic needs here. So you don't have to drive all the way into town to get something. But there you can see the baked goods. And in that little cabinet there, they're all gone because I took the last two. They make these pocket sandwiches and uh, they're really good. Everything in there is good. Just the atmosphere is awesome. A lot of history. They still have some of the original things from 1914 hanging on the wall. So a great place to just go into walk around, make sure you get some of those baked goods and you will not be sorry because it's, it's some of the best food you can get in all of Montana that I have found. So Pullbridge has become very busy in the last couple of years because of the coronavirus and the park selling tickets now to get in. A lot of people come up here thinking they can take the back way into the park and they don't have to go through the main gate and to get tickets and they can access going to the Sun Road from here? Well, you can't. Uh, you you have to go through the West Glacier Gate. Here they have a little library here in Pole Bridge where you take a book and leave a book, and then they have the North Fork News right here. If you wanna put up a bulletin about what's going on in the Pole Bridge area, that's where you get all your news. But as you can see, just spectacular scenery in this area and in Pole Bridge. The North Fork River runs right behind probably about a quarter mile behind the mercantile here and just all the signs and just the it's just a really great vibe up here and uh, everybody loves going up to Pole Bridge. We'll see here in a minute they you know they kind of ruined it I hate to say that but they used to have a volleyball court and it used to be way more laid back but because it's grown so much and you know everything changes they put in this uh little uh, food vending trailer over here. You can also get gas up here. Again, There's if you're out of gas, this is the only spot to get it, so they charge quite a bit. I didn't see what it was today, but behind it is what I was talking about. That used to be a volleyball court, and everybody would just hang out and have beers and play volleyball, and they would have live music back there, but now they put in this Bigfoot thing, and um, I guess that's progress, but... Uh, that's my, that's my only complaint about Pole Bridge is this used to be a really cool little place to go. Um, still is, uh, but it's, it has changed a little bit. If you continue, if you turn left at the Merck instead of right, uh, you'll head down this road. And as you can see, it's a horrible bumpy road, but it takes you about a mile, uh, in this direction before you cross the river and go into Glacier Park, which we'll see in a minute. But on the way, you also hit this cabin right here that's on the river. It's called the Ben Rover Cabin, and it is named after a guy that owned the mercantile back in the, I believe it was the 1930s or 40s. And he lived in this cabin here and now and then worked down and ran the store at the mercantile. But now you can rent this out through the Forest Service and it's $65 a night, and it's right on the river. You have this big area to hang out. They have a bench over there, some picnic tables. Uh, you stay right in the cabin. You can walk into into the pull bridge to the Northern Lights, and uh, or you can head less than a mile the other way, and you're in Glacier Park. And there's a bunch of other cabins. If you go further up the North Fork Road, you have the Ford Cabin, 
Uh, there are a couple others. I think the Ford cabin is $50 a night. But you can get on. It's recreation.gov and see the prices for all these different cabins. So as we continue down the road towards the park, I'll tell you the real estate in the area. Right now, there are seven homes that are actively on the market. They range in price from 315000 for a one-bedroom, one-bath, 752-square-foot cabin on 2.3 acres, all the way up to $12 million for a nine-bedroom, six-bathroom, 8,900-square-foot lodge that's on 36 and a half acres, and it has 1,200, square, 1200 feet of river frontage on the North Fork. Uh, and then as far as what's sold in the area in the past year, we've had four sales, and they ranged in price from a three-bedroom, two-bath. It was actually two log homes uh, that came out to over 2,000 square feet for the two homes for 349000 and then there was a three-bedroom, one-bath log home, 1,920 square feet that had 483 feet of creek frontage for 625000 Here we are crossing the North Fork River, and once you cross the bridge, you are back in the park. And as you will see here in a moment, this is called the North Fork Gate. And through this gate, you can get up to Bowman Lake and Kintla Lake, and this is a beautiful part of the park. If you've never been to this part of Glacier, uh, you should really check out Bowman Lake is one of the most beautiful spots on the planet. I highly recommend it. And just remember, you cannot get to the Going to the Sun Road from here. Thank you for watching our video. Please call, text, or email for more information. And don't forget to watch our other videos about Montana.